Hi and welcome to the channel, my name is Heiko. End grain cutting boards can be quite labor intensive if you build just one or if you are not specialized in that kind of yeah, project. But I want to build one and I had nice scrap pieces um, around the, the shop that saved me, I think around about 30% of the work. I show you what kind of material you can pick to save the work and how you have to treat it. Let's go. This is the scrap wood I want to use and as you can see these are wooden boards. That is exactly the key what saved me 30% of the labor. As I spare out the full first step taking little sticks and glue it together to a board. But we have to be careful. There are two different varieties of boards out there. You have boards where, where they glued up the single sticks flush end grain to end grain. And then there are boards out there where they have this kind of intermeshing glue up. Every single stick has a kind of profile at the end to, yeah, to extend the glue surface. And these are the boards you want to have. To check this you can just have a close look at the side of the board where exactly two little sticks will meet. If there is a kind of tooth profile in, you are right. These are the boards you need. Next step is to check if the boards have any kind of finish on top. My boards here, they had a little coat of oil on top. So I took a blade, scratched away everything and cleaned everything with alcohol at the end. Now you can see me here screwing up the glue up a little bit as I thought that if I use the metal rails down there they are very straight everything all right clamp everything together with F clamps um, I would end up with a kind of very straight board but I underestimated how much these F clamps bend the wood and um, yeah my idea was straight board removing residues hand planing sanding done but I had to use now my router with my plain everything device to just get a straight board at the end. So if you do that I recommend using pipe clamps, parallel clamps or even push everything or clamp everything down to a straight surface. Alright, what we basically want to do is we're just pushing the board into the router bit and then as it cuts in we move it alongside the fence to its stop. And then we repeat that with a little bit more depth. So this is what we want to do. We have to be careful that we really push the board against the fence as the router is diving in it cuts in both directions, so it has to be pushed against the fence to the stop. Yeah, this is what we basically want to do, two times, both sides of the board, so that we have a, a notch or a groove in here at the end.
All right, this now is the board and you see pretty nice. Even the engraving worked very, very nicely. So yeah, now it's uh, for me, it's time to fire up the wood a bit and, whoop, ah, and put some oil on it. Ah, and you can see how nice the colors coming out the wood really soaks it in so we need more oil but look at the colors and the differences between not oiled and oiled beautiful really good really really nice that really is a difference oiled not oiled as you see here it is still a lot of work even if you can save 30 percent of the labor just by picking the right scraps and it takes time curing the glue and end grain sanding but it is a fun project and you will end up with a cutting board that serves you for the next 20 years if you treat it right so really a worthy project to build I hope you liked that video. If not, leave me comments. If so, leave me comments. And if you like the videos I'm doing, just support me by subscribing to the channel. I hope I see you next time around here on my channel. Happy crafting!